Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. So we got a pretty big one here, the release of the new Lapse exploit by ABC, which of course is the implementation of the kernel exploit, the AIO exploit that we've been covering in the previous updates here, which could lead us to new jailbreaks on the PS4 and PS5 on higher firmwares. So the release here coming to us from ABC, who was the person who I believe originally discovered this uh, exploit in the first place, as I said in one of my previous videos, you know, we might be waiting a long time for an implementation if it has to be done from scratch, but more likely there's probably somebody who already has a working version of the exploit in private and is working on it for releasing it now that the information's out there. So that appears to be what has happened here. ABC has released a working implementation here. So this is the original post where ABC says that we're happy to release the Lapse exploit, a kernel exploit for PS4 5.00, 12.50 and PS5 1.00,10.20. Caveats, it's minimal patches for PS4 8.0x only right now. Other firmwares must be ported. So the only implementation of this works on firmware 8.0 on the PS4. No other firmwares have been added yet, but it's most likely just offsets that need to be ported to get the other firmwares working. So that will happen, you know, over time. We'll get other firmwares supported. Then also kernel read writes must be ported to PS5, so it's only working on PS4 right now. You can similarly walk proc p underscore fd, but remember that file description changed in FreeBSD 11, so just about how to kind of port it over to work with PS5. Uh, no HV exploits. Contributions for porting are welcome. We won't accept chaining with any hypervisor exploit. We'll leave the full PS5 exploit chain to forkers. Our repo will remain for demo purposes for kernel read and write. So yeah, ABC is just released this and letting everybody else, you know, create forks to port it to PS5 and other firmwares and all of that kind of stuff and chain it with maybe existing hypervisor exploits. If people want to run it on, you know, firmwares that have hypervisor exploits for PS5, then they can do that. So we now have the initial release. So we're going to start seeing a flood of updates for this, porting it to other firmwares and getting it working on PS5 next. You need to be on PS4 8.0 in order for this to work right now until it's ported to other PS4 firmwares. So just to kind of test it out, I went ahead and reverted my revertible PS4 down to 8.0 firmware and gave this a try. So if you want to test it, you just download the zip file here, open it up, which contains the files. Then all you have to do is just extract that to a folder and then run a web server in that folder that you can access on the PS4. And from there, I was able to run it. Now, whenever I run it, I just get these undefined errors. It looks like it's looking for a missing file code underscore MGS, which it's not found. So I'm not sure if that is missing deliberately or not, but it's not able to get any further. But if I kind of freeze frame during the execution of the exploit here, you can see the full exploit as it's running there from start to finish. So that is the results that I had here running on my 8.00 system with this. Now this is running through WebKit because it's using the PS3 WebKit exploit. And uh, now this will not work above firmwares, I believe 9.60 on the PS4, just because the WebKit exploit of PS3 only works up to that point, And then it was patched afterwards. So unfortunately, this particular implementation will not work past 9.60 on PS4, and it should not work past 5.50 on the PS5. So of course, if we want to get this working on higher firmwares, we'll need to chain it with a different user land exploit which will of course be the Lua exploit, which works on the latest firmwares for the PS4 and PS5. So that will have to be used with this unless we get a new WebKit exploit some point in the future. So that is the situation with this right now. It's only working on 8.0 right now. It will get ported to other firmwares fairly quickly, I assume. And then of course it needs to be paired with the Lua exploit to get it working on higher firmwares. So that's the situation right now. And then it also needs to be ported to PS5. So still a lot of work that has to go into this until we have, you know, a working jailbreak where we can run Gold Hen on higher firmwares on the PS4 and, and obviously running things like K-Stuff and ETA Hen on higher firmwares with this on the PS5. So still a long way to go, but this certainly has opened the floodgates here. Now looking at this, it does make it look like it supports up to 12.50 on the PS4 and 10.20 on the PS5, but it actually means less than 10.20 on the PS5 and less than 12.50 on the PS4. So that would be 12.02 would be the highest firmware that this supports on the PS4. And of course, 10.01 would be the highest firmware it supports on the PS5. And as if that news wasn't good enough, it looks like Zeko has been teasing a potential new hypervisor exploit for the PS5 for 3.x and 4.x firmwares. So maybe don't think about updating your PS5 firmware version just yet. 
if you're on 3.0 to 4.51 for now. So anyway, that's the situation with this news. I do have a bunch of other topics to dive into here in this video because I was planning a jailbreak news update video before this news came out. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the other topics that I also want to cover here. Most of this stuff here is for PlayStation 5. I'll try and go through these in more of a rapid fire fashion here. So we got a new version of K-Stuff from Echo Stretch that is version 1.5. It adds a few new features, the ability to disable ASLR by skipping the check by Buzzer RE, which is address space layout randomization. It basically kind of jumbles up where things are stored in memory each time that you load it. So if you're trying to find cheats, it can be kind of difficult because you can't just rely on a static memory address to point to a certain instruction because whenever you reload the game or restart the console, things will be loaded into a different section of memory and therefore that address will no longer point to that instruction. So you have to use other techniques to get around that. So being able to disable this should make it easier for developing cheats on the PS5. We also have a PSVR2 bypass by Al Aziv, which should help trying to get PSVR2 games working through K-Stuff and also added remaining offsets for 3.10. So if you were having any problems with K-Stuff on that firmware version, you might have better success with this new version. Also, this version has been included in a new build of ETA Hen, which is ETA Hen version 2.2b. This is just a test build at the moment. It's not an official release. So for the most part, the only real change is that it includes this new K-Stuff version. When we do get a official release of ETA Hen 2.2b, it will most likely have more features included. But for now, anyway, you can use this test build, which includes the new version of K-Stuff to load along with it. And you can access this on Zeko's host here on zekoxao.github.io slash luasauce, and you'll be able to load it from there. There's also been some improvements to the Blu-ray drive version of the exploit here on Victorious X's repo. So these developments come from Benox underscore XD. So the main improvements is when you run the pipeline runner, which runs the full chain exploit of the kernel exploit, the elf loader, and then ETA hen for you, it will now automatically close the disk player for you on pretty much all the supported firmwares now. So instead of you having to close the disk player yourself, it just does it automatically. So you just have to load one option on the ISO, like the normal jailbreak or the all-in-one option and then it will run the entire thing, close the disc player for you, and you'll end up back on the home page with ETA Hen running and the console jailbroken. So pretty awesome stuff there. Now, when you run the all-in-one option, it now checks the USB drive to see if you have any updated payloads on a USB drive that's connected to the PS5. So it will load those instead of any older ones that are on the disc. And then if you don't have a USB drive connected, it can also check the data folder on the hard drive for updated payloads. So you can also store them there as well if you want to update the payloads for it to load instead of having to reburn the disk again to get updated payloads on the disk itself. So that's a handy feature that's been included in this version here along with a few other improvements. Now there's also been a similar improvement to the Lua exploit which allows you to run the full chain exploit uh, without having to manually send the Lua files one by one from your computer. So this is from its PLK and in here in the save data folder we have this new PS5 Lua loader. You can put this folder on the root of a USB or again in the data folder on the internal storage and it will prioritize the USB first, then the internal storage and then the save file because you can also have this on the save file itself and load it from there. So you can load it from these three different locations. So you have to basically update your save file for the Lua exploit with all of the files here and then basically put this folder on a USB or the internal storage. And then from there, you can add whatever payloads you want to load. So by default, it has an FTP payload here. And this auto load text file has the name of the payload for it to load. So basically, you would just swap this out with like ETA hen and put the ETA hen payload in this folder and then just get rid of the FTP server elf and change it to ETA hen bin. And then you should be good to go from there and it will load everything for you. In addition to that, uh, Benox XD has also added this payload that you can add uh, the kill lua game .elf. and this will do the same thing that the blu-ray drive exploit does now which is close the game once it's finished executing all of the payloads so you can also add this payload as the last payload in the auto loader for the exploit to run and then that way it can you know run say k stuff and then after it runs k stuff it will run the kill lua game .elf which will automatically close it. So it'll basically be an all-in-one option. You just run the Lua game and then it will automatically load the save file, which will run the UMTX kernel exploit, then the elf loader automatically, and then any payloads that you put in the autoload.txt file, like ETA hen or k stuff. And then once that's loaded, it will run the kill Lua game elf, 
which will then close the game and you'll have the exploit fully up and running and all you had to do was launch the game. So another good improvement there. And the last thing that I want to cover here is that we have the first full release now of FPKGI. So version 1.0, all the previous versions were pre-release builds, but now we have the first full release from its jokers. And this adds a lot of support for PS5. So we have things like zip download support to add support for downloading, extracting and installing zip files. PS5 dump extraction included PS5 dump extraction for items flow integration. Zip installation order, so zip packages now install alphabetically, prioritizing numbers and symbols. And jailbreak compatibility, improved compatibility using a whitelisted jailbreak on PS5. And you can close the application by pressing circle twice. So this is a pretty big deal being able to not just install PS4 fake packages using this, but you could also now use it to install PS5 packages as well by essentially just having your PS5 game stored, I believe, as a maybe just a, the extracted folder or in a zip file, which you can then index with the JSON files in FPKGI and then download them from your computer or your server or from the web. And you'll be able to just download them directly onto the PS5 and integrate it with items flow, probably just scan for apps with items flow, and it will find the ones that were downloaded with FPKGI and you'll be able to run them from there. So yeah, some big improvements there with FPKGI as well, now supporting PS5 game dumps as well as your traditional PS4 fake packages. There's actually been a bunch of other updates, but I don't want to make this video too long. Obviously, the main thing, of course, is this new Laps kernel exploit release. So we'll have to see where that goes. I'm sure we'll see lots of updates for this happening pretty rapidly. So I'll likely have another video coming very soon with the latest updates here. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. As always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.